Week one is in the books here in the SFFL as I review it with the man, the myth, the legend, the commish. How you doing, commish? Feeling high energy. Nice, nice, nice. So we get started with the game of the week here between the imaginary fighters and the Dosido. -Do. There were so many storylines, but the Dosido -Do erupted. 143, 105. What a performance from Alex. Imaginary fighters um, started right where they left off as a franchise, yeah. uh, but I think they'll get going. Uh, the bigger storyline here is how Alex performed. Uh, Kyler Murray looks like an MVP candidate, D Hop right along with him. And his receivers look great. His running backs performed. This could be a very, very good roster. Yeah, obviously the receivers were the big, big part of this one. Big kahuna, really. Uh, four of the six receivers all went over 20 points. Tyler Lockett on the bench and three in the starting lineup. This might be one of the best teams we've seen at receiver, not only in this year, but in the past years as well. Uh, but the fighters, obviously, they had big news over the week. And we'll see what happens with that. We'll discuss that after this segment. Extremely Explicit takes on the Sicarios and gets the win in a yucky fashion. 95-76. Not the best performance from Extremely Explicit, but they got it done. No, not one to remember for either team here. Uh, obviously, Elijah had six points from his two quarterbacks, which will probably go down as a record low for the new format. Yeah. Um, Noah, not good either, but he was good enough to get the job done. A lot of his guys underperformed, but they got a lot of volume. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Um, Saquon Barkley. Uh, when does he get in the lineup? When does he get in the lineup? Amari Cooper was the MVP of this matchup, and maybe the entire league by the value he had to this team. He won the game single-handedly. Four, extremely explicit. Tough week for the Sicarios, but they made blockbuster news as well over the week. Polyester Dynamo takes their first loss against Wiki Wachi, but it wasn't, you couldn't even do anything about it. You're not going to beat 150 points, 149 points exactly from Wiki Wachi. One of the best performances we've seen from the tribe. Yep, uh, I've said it. Um, it's a little bold. But I think we've seen some great weeks in the SFL. We've seen Polyester go for 182. We've seen some other teams that had really high scores. We saw Sean last year in the playoffs. I think this might have been the greatest entire team performance we've ever seen in the SFL. Wow. Top to bottom. Um, it's week one, so we're trying to figure out how these players are going to do. And they, they checked the box. Almost the entire roster did it very well this week. And most importantly, Jalen Hurts. Yeah, Jalen Hurts is a big one. 55 points from the quarterbacks to Wiki Wachi. Uh, they are set. They played the Dosido -Do next week. But Paul Asia Dynamo, I think they scored zero touchdowns from anyone other than a quarterback. I'm sorry, one touchdown from CeeDee Lamb. Uh, but obviously, they went after the touchdown upside with Mike Evans over the week as well. Yeah, uh, Polyester took the, took the first L as a franchise. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about you know the whole undefeated streak going into the season. You can just worry about true. being an SFL franchise going for the title. That's true. That's a good uh, point there. So let's talk about the big breaking news of the week, the big trade between the Sicarios and the Imaginary Fighters. Uh, I talked to Ryan. Unfortunately, we couldn't get him on the call due to audio issues, but he, he I'm going to summarize what he said. He said that Elijah sent the original offer, which included Derrick Henry, DeAndre Swift, Mark Andrews, and Sam Darnold. And Ryan was not interested in either Darnold or uh, Andrews, stating that he didn't want either of them due to his situation. And... Uh, one thing led to another, and all of a sudden it was Stefan Diggs and Debo Samuel, a keeper. Obviously, Elijah was very desperate doing that deal. I also talked about his team situation. He said that he did not like his running back's performance in week one. They lacked energy, and going after Derrick Henry on Swift which should help that running back room in a huge way. Now, the quarterbacks, he also said that Rodgers will bounce back in week two and become what he was last season again. So, we had the big trade. Kamesh, Yeah. how are you going to summarize this? Well, it's a big one, and you have to go piece by piece. But really, I think the easiest way is just to look at it by team. And it's a, it's a trade that Elijah had to do. I think he lost a little value, but I think he had to to get a quarterback, right? Because mm -hmm. um, quarterbacks, they were stacked on certain teams, and because of that, they increased in value. So he yep. had to go get Mahomes. It's going to be a huge – his team got better. His starting lineup got better. Mm -hmm. And he's bringing in Mahomes, bringing in Kelsey. Kelsey was an interesting one. That one I wouldn't have thought about. But it's interesting that he brought him in. I think it'll be a huge piece for him. The question is going to be his running backs and receivers. Yep. The depth that running back and receiver just isn't there right now. Obviously, he's got Andrews, who, be, who should be a good tight end to and definitely a trade target for anyone that needs one. But the fighter side of you, they're going to get very, very good at running back and wide receiver. Yeah. His team was built for this trade right here. Mm -hmm. Mahomes, Kelsey, he had Hawkinson, he had Rodgers and Herbert. So he was prepared for this kind of a move. It was a perfect move for him. His starting lineup looks great now. He's one of the top tier teams. This uh, this could be a really championship roster. Obviously, both teams, in my opinion, got better. And we will see in week two, they do play each other and we will do predictions. But first, we have an interview with the Alabama Dosido -Do 
and we he watchy. Stay tuned. All right, and now we have an interview with two owners in the SFL. We got Alex, we got Nate, both here. Alex on phone. We're gonna start with Alex. Uh, How do you think your team did? Obviously, a win. Uh, what would you just say to summarize Week One for for the Dozy Doe? Uh, summarize Week One was um, great, but not good enough. I love that. <laughs> High expectations. All right. Where do you think you can improve? Everywhere. Um, you know, if we don't put up 300 a week, we're not doing it right. Um, <laughs> you know, that's just our mindset up in Bama. That's just how it is. Um, I mean, we yes, we got the win. Yes, we got 30 fab. Um, but, you know, we should we should have put up more on that team. Mama mentality. You got to love it. Uh, Weeki Wachi, you won in week one in dominating fashion, as you usually do. Uh, how is this year different? What do you see from your team? Well, I saw all the bench guys just absolutely erupt on the bench. Um, a lot of role players step up to the tape. Uh, but it was my star players. The identity of my team did not show up. Devontae put up five. My stars put up 14. Just not good enough. The stars will show up, and they will show out this week against the do All right, you guys are going against each other this week. We'll start with Alex. Uh, looking at Weeki Wachi's roster, where do you think the do can attack? Uh, well, obviously the wide receiver spot, that's where we, we drafted heavy there. Um, also the quarterback spot, um, that's, you know, that led our team last week other than Josh Allen. But, you know, when you face the best team in the NFL, that's on defense, you know, that, that's what you're going to put up. Um, Tyler Murray already put up an MVP candidate uh, debut, and I'm expecting the same this week and throughout the year. Um, you know, our tight end did well. I, I mean, not as well as we, he wanted to, but, you know, well enough to put up points and put up a win. Um, and I think the same thing go this week. All right, Nate, uh, you're going against the do si mm -hmm. Where's the strength of the do roster, and where's the weakness that you want to attack? Well, the receivers are pretty solid. You know, they all balled out last week. The quarterbacks are also solid. I like the running backs. I like the tight end. So they don't have very many weaknesses on that team. But we just got to beat them with our star power, with our Cook, our Kamara, our Devontae Adams, with all our stars. That's where we're going to have to win this matchup. Makes sense. Uh, do si -Do, uh, what are you thinking for the do si -Do season this year? How do you see it going? You know, uh, well, it's, it is early in the season. Um, we do have high expectations, like every other owner in this league. Um, but I could, you know, I can predict the obvious, you know, the undefeated season. Um, if we're going on a realistic standpoint, you know, I'm expecting a few losses here and there. But I would say, you know, what I would like to see and what I think I'll see is a two-loss season. Okay, okay, and uh, let's hear both of you guys' MVPs this week. Nate? I like the guy finishing on Monday, Devontae Adams. Devontae against Adams. Detroit. That's, that's the bounce back week for Devontae and this that'll week. That'll be the finisher this week. Alex, what about your MVP? You know, that's a good question. Um, I think the entire lineup is, is going to have to come in together and win this game. I think it's going to come down to Tyler Lockett. Um, he's going to be, you know, he's he's one of those guys, just like the guy I traded away, he's a boomer bust guy. Um, he boomed last week, I think he's going to ride it, and he's going to boom this week as well. Ride the locket wave, it's never failed. Um, score prediction, what's the magic number, what's the winning number this week? Nate, you want to go ahead? Yeah, I'm going to say, uh, he said 300, I'm going to say, I'm going to make a goal, I'm going to say 150. Uh, if I score over 150, I'll win. If I score less, I'll lose. That's that's my that's what I'm going with. Alex, you agree with that? That's a if you if especially after seeing our uh, me and Nate's team this week, um, you know 150. That's a good number. If you if you break that point, you you'll definitely win this week. Mm -hmm. um, however, the goal this week is 300. Like I said. Get to 300. That's a, that's a good goal right there. <laughs> All right, we have a match this week between you two that could. 
Well, that will define who the best team in the league right now is and could be a future championship match. Yep. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Nate. Thank you. And now we have Badgers predictions. I went 2-1 and one last week. I got the win in the Wiki Wachi and the Dosi Do games, but unfortunately I took an L in the Sicarios game. But week two, we go 3-0, and and we start here at the game of the week. Wiki Wachi and the Alabama Dosi Do, the two highest scoring teams from week one, and the two leaders in division can. Winner this one moves to 2-0 and for the first time in their own history actually we've never seen either of these guys 2-0 expect the battle here to be a wide receiver Devontae Adams and Tyree Kill especially going to be a huge one a lot of people were split even pretty much between Devontae Adams and Tyree Kill in the draft process but this week will be the week of Tyree Kill and the Alabama do 139-133 Alex Cole moves to 2-0 up next, we have what usually is the game of the week. Obviously, these two teams always put together a great game, no matter when they are playing each other. Polyester Dynamo and Extremely Explicit, two teams in Division Eco looking to get to the top. Expect this battle to be at running back. Christian McCaffrey, Aaron Jones, Austin Eckler, Zeke Gibson, and Najee Harris. It's going to be an interesting one with all the good matches that Noah has this week. But I got Polyester Dynamo getting back on track. 124, 118, CD Lamb is going to CD end zone. And for the last game of the slate, we have a huge battle between the Sicarios and the Fighters. These two teams already did the blockbuster trade over the week, and now they play each other in week two. Pretty ironic there. It's going to be uh, very interesting to see what happens in this matchup, especially in the night games. Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey play on Sunday night football for the Sicarios. The Fighters have Aaron Rodgers, DeAndre Swift, and TJ Hawkinson going on Monday night. The night games are going to be crucial, and I do expect the imaginary Fighters to take this one. 127, 124. Obviously, a big storyline is Nick Chubb. He got stolen from Ryan, the fifth pick. Ryan won him at six, and I expect Nick Chubb to be huge for the Sicarios, but not enough to take down the Fighters. Thank you for joining us here with the week two episode of Badger Speaks. Good luck.